I'd like now to welcome Matthew Kemshaw from the Food Share Network Chair to speak. Well, thanks, everybody. It's a real pleasure and honor to be here to speak today. Um, I just wanted to, to thank my colleagues for acknowledging the territories and say I think it is particularly important to acknowledge where we are given the, the food that we share. Um, it was brought here and used as a force of colonization. And for me, it's important to remember that, that food is uh, from the land, and, and these lands are the, the traditional territories of the Lagwangan people of the Songhees and Esquimalt Nation. And um, that, I think it's important for us to reflect upon that. Um, so I'm here today to represent the Food Share Network. Um, the Food Share Network is a collaborative effort of more than 60 community agencies who are working to end hunger in the region. Together we've set ourselves the ambitious goal of ensuring that no one in our community will worry where their next meal is coming from. The network was born from an understanding that by working together we can do more. We stopped grinding old axes and sat down to collectively solve some pernicious problems. I want to acknowledge the tireless effort over many years that these organizations and individuals have made. Without the members of the Food Share Network, none of this would exist. In the beginning and still to this day, the Food Share Network has been led by five agencies pursuing a goal to break free of the old food bank model to share food in a more dignified, empowering way. The vision was to turn food into a seed for growth. And first I want to acknowledge the, the one that we all know, the Mustard, Street, Mustard Seed Street Church. Now, the Mustard Seed has stepped, in, has stepped up in the face of extreme financial uncertainty and risk to carry this food rescue project into becoming and they have quickly turned it into a project that is a community institution depended upon by thousands of people. Derek Pace and the staff here at the Mustard Seed are truly gems who understand the power of working together. But there are other organizations who have worked tirelessly too from the beginning to make this possible. Don Evans at Our Place has been there since the beginning, a calm, intelligent voice encouraging all of us to think critically about long-term sustainability. Angela Hudson from the Society of St. Vincent de Paul has also been there since the beginning, keeping us honest and always accountable to our goals, our vision, and a transparent and open process. Pat Humble from the Salvation Army has been there from the beginning, offering humor, humility, deep compassion, and kindness. Lori Ferguson and before her Donna McKenna from the Victoria Kool-Aid Society have been consistent, clear, collaborative leaders at the Food Share Network since its beginning. The Mustard Seed, Our Place, St. Vincent de Paul, the Salvation Army, and Kool-Aid are now the permanent members guiding this work, but many others have also contributed tirelessly since the beginning to make this possible. Linda Gege from CR Fair has literally held this vision for decades. A community organizer second to none, Linda has and will continue to lift this food re redistribution project into something that is truly good and truly transformative for our local food community and economy. Linda knows better than anyone that this is not an end, but just a beginning for a much more impactful shift in the way that we feed people, one that is rooted in place, in community, and in justice. Trisha Hood and Dorothea Harris have brought patience, compassion, and community to our table as representatives of the Esquimalt First Nation, and we are forever grateful for their guidance and wisdom. Danielle Stevenson and Lee Heron from the Coalition of Neighborhood Houses have also brought community consciousness to the table from the beginning. Peggy Wilmot from St. John the Divine has been a guiding light at our table since the beginning, bringing heart and soul to this work. I also want to acknowledge the Victoria Foundation who have been much more than funders of the Food Share Network since it began. Carol Hall and Rudy Wallace have worked tirelessly over many years to make this day a reality, and they deserve a most sincere and heartfelt thank you for their vision and dedication. Finally, I want to say a huge thank you, especially to the many local nations and school groups groups we have particularly sought to work with and involve for your commitment to community, your vision for collaboration, and your willingness to walk this road with us. I also want to, sh want to thank Paul Hadfield and his staff at Spinnakers, uh, Life Cycles, who, who I work for, I'm at the executive director. We've shared space next door with Spinnakers for three years, and Paul has supported this movement and Life Cycles for well over a decade. It is also true that none of this would be possible without Spinnakers. I have excluded many more groups than I have included in this speech, but please know that each of the 60 member agencies of the Food Chair Network deserve thanks and acknowledgement for making this all possible. None of this would be possible without these people and organizations. 
And this is just the very beginning. We have a vision to turn this place into a world-leading center for food action and food systems change. Sharing surplus perishables is just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more that we can do to utilize this hub as a force for localizing our food. The Life Cycles Project Society is grateful, indeed is truly humbled, to have had the privilege of walking with so many incredible leaders to help this happen. We will continue to work in collaboration with the Food Share Network to make better food more available to all, because what we eat should support thriving, diverse communities and a healthy planet. This is truly a beginning. I just cannot wait for all of you to see what we will do together with this place secured long-term as a community asset. Thank you.